It is Nakba Day today. For those of you all who don't know, May 15th, it is the the catastrophe day um, is what Nakba means. Um, and it commemorates the displacement of Palestinians from their homes after the state of Israel was established. And of course, that came along with massive removal. Um, a lot of uh, Zionists love to say it was voluntary, lol, <laughs> when <laughs> there's like um, insane armed groups and militias around you moving in and trying to take your homes. I think for your safety, you move. Um, and if yeah, you ever I, have, yeah. I was fortunate enough uh, at, at a job early on. Uh, I met somebody, worked with somebody that's from Jordan, whose like parents' name was in the book, and they told me all about it. I was lucky enough to get hip to it pretty early on and listen to what they were saying because, uh, yeah, you know, it's still uh, not, it's still not like regular information. Like it's still not known. It's not in the education system, and um, you know, people don't want to hear it. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. And they they think that you're being anti-Semitic if you even talk about it. And yet, you know, you don't even need to go back that far in Amer in uh, Israel-Palestine history to understand what's going on and which side justice is on and which side uh, the oppression is coming from. <laughs> because this week, um, Palestinian-American Shireen Abu Akle, a 25-year-old veteran of Al Jazeera, journal uh, a journalist, 25-year-old a 25 year veteran journalist of Al Jazeera who reported from the occupied West Bank was murdered um, in what looks like pretty much a targeted mili um, Israeli military attack. It was definitely the Israeli military. Seems like more and more it was targeted. And I want to play a little clip from a former colleague of mine and friend, Dina Takuri of AJ, Plus, describing exactly what happened and also the ensuing cover-up that Israel then tried to wage. Here's what we know happened. Shireen was covering an Israeli raid in Jenin, a city in the north of the occupied West Bank. She was wearing a helmet and a flak jacket, which clearly identified her as press. Shireen was shot behind her ear, underneath the helmet, killed by Israeli fire. Journalist Shada Hanaisha was standing right next to Shireen when she was shot. And it isn't just one eyewitness account. There were multiple people who all said the same thing. But it didn't matter what eyewitnesses said. Israel's goal was to deny responsibility and create confusion. And it did so deliberately by blaming Palestinians. A few hours after the shooting, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett tweeted out this video. <laughs> saying that Palestinians were firing indiscriminately and falsely suggested that Palestinians were responsible for Shirin's death. And that suggestion then led to many mainstream media outlets creating headlines like these. This isn't just coincidence. The Israeli government knows how to use its statements to manipulate mainstream media. An official even took credit for their quote PR blitz, saying they had successfully influenced the Associated Press and BBC's coverage to cast doubt over who had killed Shireen. But here's the thing. According to witnesses at the location where Shireen was shot, <laughs> Ali Samoudi is another journalist who was shot at the scene. His eyewitness testimony immediately debunked Israel's claims. But the most damning rebuttal came from Beit Selim, a leading Israeli human rights organization. Beit Selim researchers actually analyzed the video shared by the Israeli government. They went and refilmed the location to show that the Palestinians in this video were not responsible for Shireen's death because there was virtually no way their bullets could have reached her. I think it's worth pointing out that this uh, propaganda line was propagated by no less than the Israeli Prime Minister, Foreign Minister, Defense Minister, other ministers and the IDF spokesperson. It was only after Beit Selim's video that anyone in the Israeli government walked back the claim blaming Palestinians for Shireen's death. Israel's army chief then issued a statement saying we cannot determine by whose fire she was harmed. 
So they initially swore it was Palestinians, Palestinian militants, even though, and I apologize for not uh, having the translation for the podcast listeners, but the 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 Arabic translations that you heard um, were her colleagues saying exactly that, that there were no armed people around the Palestinian, there were no like sort of opposition forces or anyone clashing with the Israeli military at that time. This is, and um... one of them was actually shot himself but the Israeli government, yeah, didn't listen until uh, Beth Salem had to do their own separate reporting. And then they're like, oh, okay, maybe we don't know who killed her. Mm. Yeah, this is um, this is uh, similar to like the Khashoggi thing in uh, that like the, these powers are going to push the button a little harder. You know, like they're going to kill a journalist um, just to keep that fear out there. I mean, I, I she is absolutely, you know on another level of bravery to, to do that much reporting. I watched the videos too and saw how long this, that, you know, she'd been doing this. And uh, you know, this is a big part of what to expect because regardless of what um, the narrative that gets out to the media is like when, on the, on the ground, people know what's happening. Um, yeah. And, and I'm convinced I've seen enough and, uh, and I don't know how we can make more headway on this issue because it's getting out of control that this, something like this can happen. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, it's amazing. You you compared to Khashoggi, and I think that's a really good comparison um, in two ways. One, because how it's similar and one, how it's different. You know, it, it is different because the reaction to Jamal Khashoggi's murder by, I think, a lot of other journalists who are not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, Palestinian or Arab or work for Al Jazeera who, like, know a little bit about this issue or are not afraid to cover the issue the reaction was so different when Jamal Khashoggi was murdered. There was way more outcry. There was way more mainstream news coverage. And of course, when it comes to Palestine, oh, just chalk it up to uh, people who can't get along. Okay, that's great. Yeah. That's an American Palestinian journalist can be killed and we'll just turn the other way. And that outrage included even people within uh, in, in government. Right. I mean, I think that this was the first time you saw a little bit of a line drawn in the sand between the Saudi government and the American government, um, even though ultimately um, I believe we advanced a bill to, you know, uh, to stop funding Saudi with weapons in, in, you know, it's ongoing like war on Yemen. And of course, it's ongoing human rights violations generally. And of course, Trump like vetoed that. But it. So that's, you know, that's where it's a little different. And, you know, it's also different because, like, now we've got Biden. And yeah. you would imagine that maybe there would be more of a reaction. But kind of as with the Khashoggi thing, nothing's happened in yeah. terms of holding Saudi accountable. And Ned Price, the State Department spokesperson, in terms of this murder of Shireen, said that he trusted the Israeli government to investigate themselves. That's all we've got. I mean, they've got the longest leash possible. And that's why these things will happen um, as long as like American Christians believe that it's some special holy land in the Bible where whatever they do is ordained by God, you know? Yep. I mean, that's where I feel like I'm coming up against when it comes to like my in-laws, you know? And other than that, it's like, you know, liberals concerned trolling me for for attacking Jews or something, you know? So <laughs> it's hard to win out here in Ohio. There's not, a, I mean, even at the Ohio state campus, I imagine someone would get punched in the face, you know, uh, yeah. pro Palestine rally. I know we have had them. I've been to them. They exist, but um, the numbers just aren't there. It's, it, it's it is tough. Situation. I mean, I think, yeah. And, and the only hope that I have is that I think more and more there's, there's, there's a breakthrough of news and media and yeah. this, it's a horrible uh, consolation prize for murder, but it is true that slowly but surely it gets through. And I think that, you know, people like Representative Rashida Tlaib being able to call out the $3.8 billion of funding every year that the United States gives Israel is really important. And I think, like, we need to stop parsing the like, well, is it for the military or is it for the country? I don't think they need mm -hmm. it at all. I don't I think like they're good. On both of those levels, how about just no more funding generally, but definitely ending the funding for occupation? 
Yeah. And the young people I know now that are high school age and in college age, uh, just friends, kids and stuff like that, they're way more have access to stuff. And it's it is at this point very undeniable. Early on in my days, um, I read the Chomsky book, Hegemony or Survival, which yes. um, explained a lot of that stuff. Um, but as like stuff like Gaza Fights for Freedom or Five Broken Cameras, like I always try to watch one of those because it just tears your heart out and it reminds you like why you have to keep telling people it's that people are annoyed. People don't want to hear that there's bad stuff, that Israel is doing bad stuff and they're going to be mad at yes. you, but you have to steal yourself and you have to really understand like how dire of a situation is over there. And, and until we make it a, a big enough problem uh, globally, I don't know, you know, how much hope there is. And, and Americans are the ones funding it too. But yes. I agree I, with you as well is that like the snowball is building, we're rolling downhill, hill, the snowball is building, um, it's going to be hard to, to support um, all of this, you know, as time goes on. Absolutely. And and those that what you mentioned are documentaries, Five Broken Cameras is a great doc. I want to also just shout out there's a new doc and I've never seen a funny doc on Palestine. Oof. But the doc mayor, which just came out, I believe, last year, which is about the mayor of Ramallah, is so funny and really good. It's just like a great fucking documentary. Everyone should see mayor. Cool. It's it's like how like finding humor amidst the occupation as you're like trying to be the mayor of a normal town in Palestine, you know, or like in the what are occupied territories. I it's get just it. it's so I mean, bizarre. I understand the impulse. Yeah, I mean, there's humor everywhere, and the yeah. tragedy it it really blunts the tragedy of a lot of stuff. So yes, I guess I mean, that sounds wonderful. I can't we, wait to check it out. Yeah, yeah, we we and we need it. We need that to be able to keep on talking about this shit. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already subscribe to this channel right now hit that button and also you can become a patron and support the show every single week get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise patreon.com slash bituation room do it